Okay, welcome to our next session. So today we will discuss our structure of a ROS repository. So the ROS repository is basically everything what we will need um, for simulating our different drive robot uh, for our first assignment and for controlling it and so on and so forth. So we can call this ROS repo, for example, um, diff drive. Okay, so this is then our Rust repo. Uh, in general, a Rust repository contains multiple packages, so Rust packages. And of course, also our Rust repo will contain more than one Rust packages. For example, there will be definitely a simulation package. Um, let's call it, for example, this way, sim package. Um, this package will contain everything uh, which we require from gazebo and so on. So everything what we require for our simulation. And just for you to know, we will start by programming this package. So we will start with this package um, during the next exercises. Okay. So this is our simulation environment package. So then we might have different other packages. For example, if we have a real robot, we would use an interface package which connects our hardware to our software, uh, so to our Rust system. So we could uh, call this int package for uh, our interfaces. And we could have several other packages. For example, um, we might need a control package for controlling our differential drive robot and so on. And we need maybe different other packages, okay? So um, now we go a bit deeper. Now we are discussing uh, what a ROS package contains, okay? So in general, for example, um, we are using the control package and a control package consists now of different subdirectories. And this subdirectories contains uh, nodes and so on, which we need to um, control our robot, basically. Um, here I will show you the pa basic package structure for a C++ ROS package. Okay, and a C++ ROS package has always a source folder and the source folder contains the ROS nodes. Um, for example, such a ROS node could be um, a PID, CPP file. So basically these nodes are just C++ files which creates a ROS node um, for the PID controller here. Or we could have a, a, a different node, for example, LQR controller. So we would have here a file which, called, which is called LQR.cpp and so on. The second folder, the second FOP folder of a um, C++ ROS, uh, ROS package is in general a lunch folder. So on this lunch folder uh, might contain lunch files. For example, um, control, uh, let's call it control, control sim dot lunch. So this lunch file will start several nodes. For example, the PID node will be started. Um, so the PID node will be started. Then some gazebo nodes will be started and so on and so forth um, to then simulate a control behavior for our differential drive robot. So this makes things easier for us and us that we only have to call one single file for launching all different nodes. Otherwise, we would have to call all these files and these files which are here um, for um, simulating our different drive robot. So this is the reason why you're using lunch files. And then we have sometimes a message folder. And this message folder 
uh, contains customized messages. For example, uh, we could have here a comment velocity dot message, uh, which is a message which con which um, holds some maybe some floating points. For example, consists of float v and float and float omega. Um, such that this is the input to our system. However, um, in our course, so in our exercises, we won't need um, customized messages, so we don't need this. Um, we will use already available messages in ROS. However, there are, there are some cases where you have to define uh, new messages, especially if you are really creating um, a general ROS package for the community, then you should define here uh, your own messages, okay? So, and then there are two important files. One file is the CMake list. And the CMake list defines or tells the compiler um, how to compile everything here. So, this CMake list tells the compiler how to compile basically here everything, okay? And then we have the packages, no, packages.xml, and this tells us which packages are required for compilation. Okay, and that's it. So that's the basic structure of our ROS repo. And we will now start to design this structure for our simulation environment. For, so to create really a diff drive robot in a simulation environment and then steer it around and try to save people. Okay. And then we will start by, as I already mentioned, by creating the simulation package. So this is the first step which we create. And then we go on and create basically the control packages package uh, where we define some controller, control algorithm, uh, how to steer our robot in the simulation environment. So we won't need, in our case, we won't need any um, interfaces since we're not working with a real robot. Okay, let's start coding. Okay, so let's start with our um, ROS repo. But first of all, let's install a good IDE for programming. Um, and therefore, we're using the Qt Creator ROS uh, plugin. And so we're searching for ROS Qt Creator plugin. Oh, well. And we go here, how to install. We are users. And then we simply can use the Bionic Online Installer. So we simply have to download it, save the file. And then we follow up the Q2 installer procedure. That's quite easy. So the first step will be to make the file which we just downloaded um, click, uh, so executable. Therefore, we go onto our uh, file system directory and go for the download folder. And here it is. So we have to go on properties and allow executable. Okay, that's it. Um, then we simply can go on run and the installation procedure will start. So we can now click through our installation procedure. Um, so we would like to install Qt Creator with it. And then we simply choose one license. Um, we have to accept the licenses and then we go in and sell.
Okay, now we finish our installation, and that's it, basically. Okay, so everything we have done here, it's fine. Uh, now we can open our. Um, no. Qt creator. So that's it. So we don't need a QI tour. So um, we first can check for updates as recommended. But it seems we got already the newest version. Okay. So then let's start a project. So uh, we want to like to define a new project. Um, and we would like to use a ROS project, ROS workspace. So we choose this. And we choose already the uh, right distribution, so Meloptic. Um, we would like to use cat can make and we call our project diff or diff drive vs. So that means this is our diff drive workspace. Um, then we define a workspace, so um, let's go to home And simply add here um, ah, here. Add a new folder, so we call this this drive. Yes, and um, we create this folder. Okay, that's it. So this is our workspace pass. Uh, our workspace name has the same name as our uh, workspace folder. So then we click next. Uh, we are fine with this. We don't want to use a version control right now. Uh, later on, we might use Git. Um, however, we can't use Git already. And then we can uh, click on Finish. So that is. We have now here our master, and we have a diff drive workspace. Okay. So there's nothing else in it. Um, so what we can do now is to add files. So let's check where our diff drive workspace is. So as you can see, it's here. Uh, we can click here on it. And then let's add a new folder. We call it source. And in this source folder, there will be all our um, ROS repositories. Right now, we will just have one ROS repository. And we will call this repository diff drive robot. OK, let's click here. So now we have our repository drift dive robot. So furthermore, then we have to define here our simulation packages. Um, for example, let's call this sim. Let's call this simulation environment. Um, this is our simulation environment package with which we will start in the next session. So we could here add more packages, for example, um, the control package, um, control, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's it. So now we have everything fine.